Welcome to the 36th Enderly Memorial Pull-Off presented by Cowtails. The competition you are about to witness is a one-of-a-kind, one-run-and-done event. As the drivers and teams you have watched all season long dial their powerful machines up to 11 to grab for Enderly glory in one final run for 2023. This year's pull-off will star 25 national divisions, which ties a record set in 2016 for the most ever at the event. In the first segment of tonight's performance, we'll watch 42 regional national competitors from the NTPA's four active regions. Region 2, which includes Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio, plus one event in Pennsylvania. Region 3, which encompasses Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and one pool in Illinois. Region 4, which contains North Carolina. And Region 6, which features Florida. Pullers in this first session are champions or high point earners from 12 different divisions which compete in some or all of these regions. Two of these categories are making their inaugural appearance at the Enderly Pull-Off, Classic Superstock Tractors introduced to national competition in 2019 will have three representatives from Region 2. Meanwhile, Superstock 4 wheel Drive Trucks, which became a national class in Region 2 in 2019 and in Region 3 in 2022 after many years as a state class in Minnesota, will have two trucks from the Eastern Ohio River Valley and one from the Upper Midwest. In Light Limited Superstock, the Ride All family got two tractors in this year and they're both cockshuts. Patriarch Harold will drive the Chicken Coop Special, which he has done now for 55 years, and son Tim will pilot the unnamed 570. Jeremy Roth has hauled the Mohawk Warrior in from Wisconsin after winning Region 3. In Classic Superstock, the tooth and nail battle for the division title will take one weekend off before they finish out their season in Medina. It's John Stanley's Green Broke Deer with driver Ryan Pollock who enters on top, while Al Heasley's Tin Man, last year's champion, arrives here in second. The third place berth went to Matt Spillman's Shell Shocks. All three hail from Eastern Ohio. In Super Farm, four different regions are represented. Out of Region 2, the Casey's Whoopie Maker was plenty stimulated, putting up seven straight 30-point performances early on and 10 of 14 overall to pull away. From Region 3 comes a second service from our Minnesota preacher, Steve Yagi, who won it all last year with Holy Smokes. Region 4 was settled last weekend but started last year, and Daniel McDonald's Bad Boy was the best of the bunch. And Region 6 was won by Chris Hales' Outlaw in a three-way tie on points that was broken by a tractor's length worth of distance. In Light Pro Stock, the boss is back. Tom Schaefer took the eastern berth of Region 2 with 87 points across his last three appearances. Evan Smoot's Barnyard Bandit closed even faster. Down seven entering the final event last Saturday in Lynn, he won the class and went up by four. Kurt Offdahl is making his early debut aboard Weekend Mistress after a fantasy season that opened with a victory in Tomo, Wisconsin. And from the southeast, Kendall Beasley parlayed a Benson, North Carolina sweep on High Gear Harvester into a commanding lead in a six-hook series. In 4.1 Limited Pro Stock, a tractor named after a legendary modified has brought the All family back to the Enderley. Jacobs just add dirt one inch session at Fort Recovery and again in Wauseon. But now the mountain only gets steeper as out of the west comes Enderley rookie Chris Ashleman and digging for a living, which posted five wins in 14 appearances. And only Ashleman topped perennial contender Kevin Lindstrom and his Hyper Harvester, who have never met an invitational they didn't win. Lindstrom boasts four big Enderley checks. In Hot Farm, they can't wait to dig those 20.8s into this power track. Everett Wilkerson continued his momentum from last season's end into a second straight berth in the show. His just one more finished 16 points ahead. Second are reigning point and Enderley champ Brian Carrington and Endless, who claimed victory in Hudson Hill, Michigan. And original J.I. Case fans rejoice. You're pulling against the odds, but with Tim Jones, who celebrated on the pond with a win in Morley. In two-wheel drive, it took 18 scheduled appearances to get two of our competitors here. Chad Mayhill and Joe Shaneman teamed up on Old Blue and overcame a deficit from the 2022 wraparound to win the top berth. Matt and Jim Seitz are making their third straight appearance with Buckeye Hooker 2 Roadster. All Roger Torgerson did in his first year of NTPA competition is win Region 3 with Wide Open. Welcome to the national scene, Darren Wilson. The young man from the old line state brings Running Bear to Urbana to follow his mom and dad into the Enderley record books. Daniel L. Johnson was among the first this year to have his name etched there after winning a Florida tiebreaker with his Gold Leaf Gambler. We'll have six four-wheel drive trucks to watch, three from the Modified Division and three from Superstock. In each case, we'll bring in two from Region 2 and one from Region 3. In four-wheel drive, 
Christopher Taylor's Grain Haulers Mafia is back for another load in its first visit to the Interleague in seven years. Coming to the hallowed twin tracks for the very first time is Patrick McCarthy, who had his mad-ass sin pulling angry all year and into the second berth from Region 2. And clinching the spot in a Sandwich Illinois comeback over his son's ride is Mike O'Connor, who will try to match David's win last year on Nasty Boys. In Superstock four-wheel drive, Darren Young has won every title the NTPA has offered so far, and he's hoping to add to that with an Enderly Championship in Livewire. Chasing Young across southwestern Pennsylvania and eastern Ohio with back in black was Davey Kenziorski, and he'd like nothing more than to upstage the three-time champ. But they'll have to contend with class veteran Tim Carta, whose pulling for autism is here after claiming Region 3's crown. In Stainless Diesel of Pro Stock Diesel 4x4 3.0, the northern berth goes to the Iron Maiden of Brian Shu, who began his march to Urbana over a year ago with a win in Allegan, Michigan, and tacked on three more since. Out of the south comes early newcomer Calvin Logan, who's running out of room, nabbed six top fives and 11 hooks, including a win in Greenville. And the overall top earner was Robert Whitman, who followed 2022 participants Eric and Jake into the Enderley with his own in Boosted. In Modified Mini, from a division which pulls in every active region, we have five entries. David Lacey's got two of them, having clinched the region six berth in April with triple play, double or nothing. When Double also took the southeast half of Region 2, Stablemate Unchained made it in. But Matt Boltman and Stress Relief didn't let them have the whole territory. They took the northwest berth with four wins dating to Allegan last September. The luck of the Irish held up for Nathan Hoffman and Shaken Shamrock, who claimed a winner-take-all in Ridgeland over Labor Day weekend. And Mary Kale had an eventful trip south in January. Ask her about it or watch the video. But her spending their inheritance got back on track in Lumberton, North Carolina to finish off the berth she'd sought since sweeping Raleigh last fall. And in Modified, it's one automotive twin engine versus a double and triple turbine in a mashup of storied names from the division's long history. Don Dean is back in the pull-off after a four-win season across the Northwest brought his plumber's nightmare a bus ticket to Champaign County. Brad Bargy and the jury next generation qualified from the Southeast with five wins. Team Tractor the Judge topped it on points as they claimed spots one and two. The all-new Hemi-powered, yes, Hemi-powered, corn and soybean special GMO has Ken Miller looking between motors instead of over top, but he'd love to get another view from the winner's circle. And we should mention Jack Kielmeyer and Jacked Up Relentless, who qualified from Region 3 but could not attend today. That'll do it for the first of our two acts. After the intermission and regional national awards presentation, which should take around a half hour to complete, we'll come back with a grand national performance, which returns to full strength at 13 divisions this year. Before we get into the grand national roster, let's take a moment to note that we have six ladies in tonight's competition. We also have six fathers and sons who have both qualified, as well as one father-daughter team and one husband-wife team. And from where do our Enderly drivers hail? One each from Georgia, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Vermont, and the province of Ontario. Two each from Illinois, Missouri, and Tennessee. Three each from Iowa, Kentucky, and Maryland. Four from North Carolina. Six from New York. Seven from Michigan. Eight from Minnesota. Fifteen from Indiana. Sixteen from Wisconsin. And twenty-six from Ohio. And now our grand national competitors. In light superstock. Terry Blackburn and Mike Cheesex, considered armed and dangerous, steadily chipped at defending champ Adam Spiegelberg's lead all year and then survived a turbo scare in Canton to clinch. Spiegelberg and his detonator Black had won two of the previous three titles and will be looking to end the season on a high note. Colton Whitworth's bin buster is in Urbana for the first time after a fine first season on the circuit that nabbed him his first GN win in Stark County. Thirds in Benson and Bowling Green highlighted Craig Smith's sophomore season on Whiskey Slime. And Josh Blackburn and Excessive Force posted six top fives to overcome some tough finishes. In Superstock Diesel, Kent Payne at last has a plaque for his wall after powering so many others to theirs. Payne and Super Rooster took a month to clear their throats, then broke into song for three straight wins across Fort Recovery and Rockwell, and a fourth later in BG. The Degenhart stepped up their digging hard, which can now add a GN Diesel Super Second to its light, heavy, and heavy diesel resume. Steve Burge and Lock and Load were solid all season in bringing the two-time champion tractor home third. Colin Ross and Triple Bypass matched wits with Rooster all season and laid down spectacular passes in Hutchinson and Chapel Hill. 
Travis Schlaubach qualified fourth with Bone Twister, but breakage ended his campaign last weekend. So we'll see Mike Beck's high-tech redneck, which was driven by Kent to a runner-up finish in Pull Town. In Superstock Open, it was a daily double for the Gansmere team, Zane Daly that is, and Rutten Deer too, which followed up on Bob's title from two years back. Daly held off Cody Cheesick in his freshman effort aboard Dad Mike's returning champion tractor considered Armed and Dangerous HD, as well as the Blackburn piloted Extremely Armed and Dangerous. Bob came home fourth with the original Rutten Deer, and another rookie, Holt Strickland, got his first career GN win in hometown Benson in June, and finished fifth with Get a Load of That. In Super Farm, the whole division got the cold shoulder from Dad Greg and son Russ Freeze, who won their first title aboard Deer Tracks by leading wire to wire and winning in Benson and Rockwell. Ryan Anderson checked in with checking out as the season was coming to a close in Sandwich, Illinois to firm up second. Dan Scholdy's Binder Express had a great rebound campaign from a frustrating 2022 to finish a solid third on five top threes. Kurt Hartzell will drive the fifth place plastic money for teammate Jason Benzer, who was runner-up twice in DeKalb County. And Dave Whelan and My Last Excuse extend their regrets, so taking their spot is last year's champion Gary Shevink aboard New Attitudes. In Pro Stock, Brent Meyer notched three wins and a 75 power ranking en route to a title in his very first NTPA season. Unfortunately, he and his compatriot Brandon Simon with Loud and Heavy could not make it to the Enderly. But answering the call are Danny and Kevin Schmucker with Rampage and Gitter Dundeer. They'll join fellow Ohioans Mike Connie and Julia Ray, whose Mac Nasty and Mac Daddy were third and fourth in the championship chase. Julia was unstoppable in early August with three straight wins in Rockwell, Napoleon, and BG. And Jack May is qualified billet binder on the last hook and sandwich, but also could not attend, and so flying the red banner will be Tim Kane and the Red Gambler. In two-wheel drive. It had been 15 championship seasons since brothers Donnie and Danny drove a Sullivan truck to the top of the heap. Donnie has done it again, this time with Big Stick, which won in first sessions at the Fort and Bowling Green. Alan Kane's Rat Rod Mad Max has the scars to show for a bruising campaign, but it came home in showroom quality in second. Jesse Petro returns to the Enderly with Buckeye Hauler for a 26th trip down the pull-off track. He's won it five times, most of anyone in the division. Christy Seacrest and Nothing Easy About It hit their season highs on the biggest stages in Monroe and Wood Counties with a second and a third. And R.J. Simon had to decline his invitation with a fourth place Dirty Pearl. So Joey Frazier will be hoping the night time is the right time for his come around sundown, which captured the flag at the fourth. In four-wheel drive, it was a hammer and tong war for supremacy from the drop of the green in Farley, Iowa, where the top two contenders went 1-2 both nights. Eventual champion Mark Mangan and the Outlaw posted three wins and three seconds en route to Mangan's first GN appearance at the pull-off in a decade and a half. 2022 champion Jake Zaring and Ruler 19 went into Wasion tied with Mangan after three wins and four thirds and finished runner-up for the second time in three seasons. Jake's son Ike and Bucket List stayed on the perimeter of contention and had a mid-season W in Chapel Hill. There, Ben Ellis and Ben Jammin also did their best work and were welcomed to the stage after a Saturday night third. And Carmen Foster's foster child was a runner-up in both sessions of Toma to earn that event's weekend championship. In Superstock Diesel 4x4, we had another two-truck slugfest from the start in Hutchinson. Eric Stacy and Smokinya got off to the fast start with two big wins at the Power Pool Nationals and added a third blue ribbon in Rockwell to pick up their first title. Nick Gillette's top shelf answered with their inaugural GN win in Toma and augmented that with a second and five thirds across 11 hooks. 2021 champ Justin Gerhardt had a hair raising with a Z, fun raising with an S time in Bowling Green, but his biggest on track victories came on consecutive weekends in Western Ohio and Northern Iowa with cream of the crop. Craig Dickey's Cummins Killer 3 showed a flash of its murderous streak in Rockwell as he dialed in his Duramax with twin seconds. And Keith Witt's American Pride waved its way to fifth after a win in Dairyland. In Super Semi, they all felt the burn. Ryan DeBrew and Playing With Fire, competitive since they began their career in NTPA, are finally champions on the strength of seven top threes, including a trophy in Toma. Wani Sailor's Holy Smokes got its win near home in Hutch in a runner-up effort. Chris Schroeder and Chris Milsner took Crazy KW at the third with the best finish of second at Recreation Park. Two-time defending champ Brian Elthorpe and Nikki's Nightmare had their dreams dashed by breakage, but tossed and turned their way to three wins upon their return. 
and Craig Braun's executioner had to sit this one out, so Ben Gordon's literate tater chip, fresh off a salty seventh, will go for the bag instead. In Modified Mini, second through fifth may have changed, but number one stay the same. Adam Bauer became the only 2022 champ to repeat, doing so without a win with his Iron Toy, but with six top fives. Rene Theobald matched Sun Grant's rookie effort from last season with a newly christened Pretty Wicked Mini in second. She won in Hutch and Rockwell. Brian McDonald's Very Little Sanity got nuts in Bowling Green to win the 10K race on Saturday night. Brian Guza and Grandpa's Disaster had it all going right on Saturday afternoon in Toma, and Chase Richardson's Vibrator overcame a slow start to the season to claim fifth with a W in Napoleon, Ohio. In Light Modified, we have a brand new division which places supercharger size restrictions on twin engines. The division's original champion is Les Corporal, whose corporal punishment held up through the light and heavy mod schedules, winning half the former. At Rockwell, Todd Feist and Snow Farmer won to pull within a point of punishment in their second Grand National stint and ended up three points back. It was a tale of two seasons for Terry Feist and Feisty Farmer. The turnaround started with a Rockwell third and culminated in a BG second. Past Light Unlimited champ Keith Wason and Super B had their best day in Benson. And while Brandon Simon and the Simon Says Twin bookended the regular season with victories, they'll miss the Enderly. And so Mike Shaneman and Night Train have been invited to complete the field. In Modify, the echoes of a thrilling finale are still ringing across the Sandwich Illinois bleachers. There, Brandon Simon and the Quad Engine Simon Says overcame a two-point deficit with a pair of statement wins to earn the title. But the day job, farming, will keep them in Iowa this weekend, so Tommy Owens and Ramblin' Rose, runners-up for a third consecutive season with wins in Hutchinson and Rockwell, got first choice of draw number. Brett Berg's streak of modified titles ended at three, but he and his moneymaker are hungry after a three-month winless stretch. Jeff Rose and Giddy Up had a rip-boring time in Toma to take the event's championship. Later, Dylan Owens' Bowling Green had a nice ring to it, as his all-new Thorn was the standard bearer there with a first and a second. And with Simon back on the farm, Les Corporal will load a third noisemaker onto Corporal Punishment's chassis mid-session. And in Unlimited, the threes and fours had real fine tours, but twas the Iowa Five that came alive. Adam Bauer's reconfigured Quinn engine cross-threaded won its first championship since 2013, with wins at all three five-session events. That and the mini title make 13 total for Adam, second most at the GM level ever. After three in a row for Joe Ayer's Polar Air Emax, it was a year of rediscovery, but it ended on the sweetest of notes with a ring in Pull Town. Wayne Purser's Uncle Sam had its best three hook stretch early, with a second and two thirds across Chapel Hill and Fort Recovery. David Richardson's foursome was second and third at two Lions Club Bulls and will attempt to repeat as Enderly Champ. And Lane Bollinger could not make it with Money Pit, so Billy Beers will make his first trip to the pull-off since his first year at Urbana, 2006, with his war wagon. So that's about it for this year's Road to the Enderly Traffic Report. Thanks to Enderly Fuel Injection of Simi Valley, California, and Getz's Candy of Baltimore, Maryland, makers of cowtails, for their sponsorship of the 36th annual Enderly Pull-Off. Visit ntpapull.com in the waning days of this season and all of 2024 for event schedules, information, lineups, results, and championship and enderly qualifying standings. Reporting for the National Tractor Pullers Association, I'm John Dunlap. Enjoy the show, everyone.